Your network security is top priority and must be ensured at all times. Otherwise, exposing your entire network's infrastructure to potential cyber attacks can cause colossal financial damage. Would using a firewall enhance it? Yes, big time. Your firewall acts as a gatekeeper or as a central point managing the access of end-user devices. With this role in mind, it can enhance your network security in many different cases. One of those cases involves VLANs, for when you want to structure your network or assign policies to particular subnetworks as well as end devices. Let's have a look at one example. If you own a company, you probably have a couple of different departments you don't really want to exchange or see each other's data. To achieve that, the first thing you need to do is decide based on which policies you want to permit access or communication between each department. Let's say you want end devices from the accounting and sales departments to communicate with other devices in these departments, but not with devices in all other departments. And for the people from the IT department, you want to permit access reaching all other end devices, but not the other way around. You'll have to implement VLANs within your network. But before that, you need to configure firewall zones, which will take care of the VLAN security factor by controlling end-to-end -end device communication between different zones. In addition to that, you'll also have to configure traffic rules so that end devices can communicate with the router and obtain basic internet connectivity. Let's begin with the firewall configuration by logging into your Teltonica Network's router's web UI. In this video, we'll be using RUTX 50 cellular router. To access the firewall section, you need to enable the advanced web UI mode. To create a firewall zone, go to the network section and press the firewall tab, open general settings, and under the zones section, press add. In the new zones section, the first thing you need to do is name your zone for easy management. Let's call it the restricted zone. You're then greeted with the router's firewall chains, which determine how end devices that belong to this specific zone will interact with the router. You can leave chains policies as they are. However, you can also set the input chain to drop policy for higher security measures. This will ensure that the router won't respond to any undisclosed communication attempts. Regardless of whether the input chain's policy is set to drop or reject, it will make it impossible for any kind of traffic to even attempt to reach your router's services. After that is the covered network section, but let's leave it empty, as we'll set it in the interface configuration part later on. In the interzone forwarding section, you can see the allow forward to destination zones window, in which you have to specify the VAN zone. This step is crucial, as it ensures that the end device belonging to the configured VLAN networks will have internet access. Once you're done with that, press save and apply. To configure a firewall zone for the IT department, you need to go back to the zones list and edit the LAN zone. Once you open it, scroll down until you see the interzone forwarding section. In the Allow Forward to Destination Zone window, you need to add the recently created Restricted Zone. Press Save and Apply. This step ensures end devices from the IT department can reach clients from the Restricted Zone, but devices from it can't reach IT end devices. At this point, you've configured the Firewall Zone. Now let's take care of Traffic Rules. For that, go and press Traffic Rules. Once you open this window, scroll down and stop at the Add New Instance section. Here you need to leave the Open Ports on Router type as it is to permit selective communication with the router. This will determine that all end devices with the help of DHCP will be able to automatically configure VLAN assigned IP addresses. In addition, with this traffic rule, you will also permit DNS resolution which resolves host names. Name the new traffic rule for easy management and leave the protocol as it is. In the external port window, you need to indicate specific protocols according to their port numbers. By pressing the Add button, a new window will open up. Here you'll get into the specifics of traffic rules. Make sure that the source zone stands for the zone you've recently created and that the destination zone is set to device input. For the destination address, we suggest you leave it as any. An essential aspect of this configuration is the destination port, so make sure previously typed in ports are present. These will allow end devices to resolve host names and generate IP addresses with the help of a router. Make sure that the action is set to accept. All other settings are optional, so you can configure them according to your personal needs. Press save and apply, and there you have it. You've just configured the firewall part. Now, let's configure VLANs. For that, go to the network section, press the VLAN tab, and go to the port base subsection. 
VLAN configuration involves the VLAN ID and LAN port sections. Add a new VLAN by pressing Add. Give a VLAN ID name according to your preference for easy management purposes. Note that LAN 1, 2 and 3 stand for the physical ports of your router. If your device has more than 3 LAN ports, you can simply turn off the remaining ports by changing its status from untagged to off. And make sure to save the new status. For this part of the configuration, it's important to know that one physical port can have only one untagged VLAN. Now the VLAN is successfully assigned to a physical router's port. The last part of VLAN configuration involves creating a VLAN interface. For that, stay in the Network section, press the Interfaces tab and stay in the General section. Here you need to scroll down and in the Add New Instance section, type in a new interface name. Press Add. In the General Settings section, you need to choose a protocol. Make sure your chosen protocol is static. Once you're done with that, you are greeted with a lot more settings. Here you need to decide what type of IP address and net mask you want to use. You may also specify custom DNS servers if needed. This can be relevant when your ISP provides you with a specific DNS IP address but you don't want to use it. After this step, press the Setup DHCP Server button and here you can leave the default settings as they are, since the most important part here is enabling the DHCP server for the new VLAN interface. Of course, you can modify and configure additional DHCP settings in the Advanced Settings section but this part is also optional. Now let's go back to the physical settings section. Here it's vital to choose your newly created VLAN interface whose name got automatically generated back when the VLAN ID was assigned to a physical port. Last but not least, in the firewall settings section, you need to make sure to select the right firewall zone that was created for the specific VLAN. Press save and apply and that's it. Now the physical LAN 1 port will belong to our newly created VLAN meaning that any device connected to it won't be able to communicate with end devices belonging to different VLANs. In our case, the exact same configuration must be applied to the department that falls under LAN 2 physical port. Note that for the IT department's VLAN, we have to assign a LAN zone, which will allow anyone from this department to reach other departments and devices, but not the other way around. Now in case you need to create a wireless access to your network but don't want to risk its security, a firewall can help with that. Let's say you want to set up a wireless guest access with restrictions that wouldn't allow the guests to exchange any data with one another or any of your end devices. You also don't want them to be able to access your router except for the predefined ports. This specific case requires an identical firewall zone to the one that we've created for the VLANs, so we won't be configuring a new one. You can go back to the part of the video if you need a refresher. Still, if you have any additional requirements, you can create a new firewall zone with new traffic rules and policies for more granular management. To start configuring the guest Wi-Fi, you need to go to the network section and press the wireless tab. There you can create a Wi-Fi network for either the 2.4 GHz or a 5 GHz band. In this case, let's make Wi-Fi for the 2.4 GHz band. Press Add. In the general setup section, you can see the ESS ID next to which you have to type the network name that will be visible to the guests. When it comes to assigning an interface in the network section, you should create a new custom interface and name it for easy management purposes. Leave the rest of the general setup settings as default and move on to the advanced settings section. Here you need to press the isolate clients button, which will prevent guests from communicating with other network guests. After this, go to the wireless security section and configure an encryption type according to your internal company's policy. If you choose a specific encryption type, which requires using a pre-shared key, create a password that guests will have to type in before entering your network. Press save and apply and you'll be automatically directed to the configuration window of our newly created Wi-Fi network interface. In the general settings section, you can set the Wi-Fi interface IP address and network size and configure a custom DNS server if needed. Don't forget to set up the DHCP server. Here, it is essential to note that you can control the lease time which determines after how long the assigned IP address will expire. Now go to the firewall settings section and select an appropriate firewall zone. The rest of the settings can be left as they are. Press save and apply and that's it, you've created a much more secure Wi-Fi access. 
we've got one more case where a firewall can be of great service and that involves VPNs. Suppose you have an employee who works from home using a personal computer and wants to access their work computer remotely. That means you need to create remote access to your local area network. Before diving into VPN configuration, it's important to note that a firewall zone will be automatically generated for the VPN once it's configured. You'll only have to set up inter-zone forwarding and port forwarding. Start the configuration by going to Services and pressing the VPN tab. Here you can see many protocols to choose from. We recommend the WireGuard protocol as it's available on all Teltonica Networks devices running on RUTOS. If you do select WireGuard, make sure you have its dedicated software which is used to generate private and public keys necessary for the VPN configuration process. You can download it from the official WireGuard website. Once you take care of that, add a new instance and give it a name. Once again, press Add. After doing that, you're greeted with a new window where you need to start the configuration in the General Setup section. For the IP addresses, type in any private IP address that isn't already in use. Then, in the same window, add a new Peer instance, which is going to stand for the personal computer of your employee. Keep in mind that for this part, you have to have your router's public key ready. Press Add, and a new window will appear. We recommend starting the WireGuard software at this point. Doing so will make exchanging information between your employee's home computer and office router easier. In the WireGuard window, add an empty tunnel and name it for easy management. In the new window, you can only see the employee's home computer's public and private key information. However, you also need to type in the word address and next to it write a private IP. Move on to configuring peer settings on the employee's home computer. Begin a new peer section by typing in the keyword, under it write down public key and paste the public key generated by the router. Then write allowed IPs and type private network IP for this VPN subnet. Only this network will be capable of implementing communication between your office router and the employee's home computer over the VPN tunnel. After that, write endpoint and following it, paste in the office router's public IP address, which you can receive from your ISP. Make sure to type in 51820 at the end of the address as it corresponds to the router's listen port. The last thing you might want to type in is persistent keep alive. This would ensure that the remote employee's device would keep the office router informed about itself and maintain a persistent connection, which is useful in cases of internet loss or when IP addresses changes. Before completing this configuration, pass all information about the employee's home computer to RUTOS. In this case, the description and route allowed IPs settings are optional. Press save and apply in RUTOS, and then press save and activate on the employee's home computer's wire guard. At this point, the only thing left are touching up the firewall zone and creating a new port forwarding rule. When you go to general firewall settings, you'll find a new firewall zone created specifically for the WireGuard instance. Here, you need to make some changes to enhance the router security. Edit the WireGuard zone and change the input from Accept to Reject. In the Inter-Zone Forwarding section, remove the LAN zone and leave the two windows empty. Press Save and Apply. Now, for the port forwarding rule, make sure you know the employee's work computer's IP address and the port of the service running on the work computer. In this case, connect to a workstation which allows incoming remote desktop connections via port 3389. Add a new port forward instance and name it for easy management purposes. The external and internal ports will be 3389 for this case. For the internal IP address, type in the employee's work computer's IP address and press Add. After that, you're greeted with a new window. In it, it's important to set WireGuard as the source zone and for the internal zone, choose the one in which the target device resides. Make sure that the correct internal IP address is selected. You can leave the rest of the settings as they are, press save and apply, and that's it. You have created a secure connection between your employees' work and home computers. These are only a few of the many ways you can use a firewall to improve your network security. If you'd like to learn of more ways, make sure to leave your suggestion in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe.